introducing you guys. Um, I, I learned about this uh, Gold Opportunity Zone Fund investment at the last Ivy event. And I think we all know that, you know, most Opportunity Zones are, uh, or most Opportunity Zone funds are real estate funds. And it seemed like everybody and their brother launched one, many who had no expertise in this space. Yes, there's interesting tax aspects, but you know, if you're buying expensive real estate and you're locked in for 10 years, what, what good is that? So I was pretty excited uh, to hear this presentation previously because I've you know, been bullish on gold and this just seems like a more tax efficient, obviously, way to hold gold. And it's definitely, definitely unique, which I think is kind of an aspect of you know, all of these events that Marty puts on are very unique investments. Um, so I'll let, you know, Mike and Curtis, uh, tell more, but, um, I think Mike will be the featured speaker here, uh, a few highlights on his background, uh, former Navy SEAL has led training programs for SEALs, um, also, you know, pretty good investment background. Um, they've got advisors to the fund, including, I think from, uh, Michael Dell's family office. Um, I've obviously had too much caffeine, so Mike or Curtis, if I missed anything in the intro, I apologize, but otherwise I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys to tell us about investing in gold through an Opportunity Zone Fund. Great. Thank you, Robert. Mike, are you, uh, you right there? Are you ready to share your screen? I think we... Uh oh, did Mike freeze? I think he is frozen. Let's see. Mike? Yeah, Curtis, do you have me? Oh, great, perfect. Yeah, we're just okay, waiting sorry. for you to bring up the- Oh, no problem, sorry. The uh, yeah. <laughs> zoom, 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 just a minute. Um, Robert, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, Curtis is here with me, obviously. We'll walk through the presentation with you. Just to give you a quick uh, overview of my bio, I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania uh, with Curtis in 1988. The SEAL officer for the first Gulf War. I wasn't too happy with the way we left things. Uh, left to go to business school at Columbia. Uh, along the way, worked for Solomon Brothers, worked for the Vanderbilt family office, came out to the West Coast, worked for a firm called Duncan Hearst. At the time, we had an edge fund, half the money in edge fund was George Soros's, half was Goldman's pension fund. Uh, I went back to Princeton, where I grew up, started a hedge fund with my father. Uh, my father is a pretty successful uh, investor, sold his interest in a firm called Miller Anderson and Sherrod. Um, if you look up Atkinson, Cornell, uh, Princeton, you can see some of the philanthropy associated with that wealth. Um, worked there, uh, you know, through 2001, 2001, thought about going back on active duty in association with the war. Certainly didn't think the war was going to last as long as it did. Along the way with um, uh, my best friend, Alex Moore, who's on the uh, advisory board, we started a due diligence business using CIA assets because he was an actual case officer. I had a fair amount of experience in the intelligence side. We came to Wall Street with a due diligence product that you could find stuff. You'd come up with information you couldn't come up with anywhere else. It was an interesting experiment. Um, along the way, I got my, my, uh, all my clearances back to work on uh, a black project that kind of looked like an investment company and allowed me to see that there was some opportunity in the uh, in the paramilitary space. Started this business, T3. Um, we do tactical gear, we do training, we do security. Um, spin out business at T3 is called T3I. We train, T3I trains every new enlisted SEAL as they come out of boot camp before they come to Coronado. T3I has a dozen instructors that work for us inside the compound. Uh, security, we did a lot of stuff for uh, at Deutsche Bank over time. So we've done some, some of the highest, the highest end stuff that they couldn't do internally, we did for them. So we've got pretty, pretty good experience with investing, pretty good experience with security, pretty good experience with the government. And the government experience um, is what really drives Oric because you're constantly looking for how the rules are and how the rules change and so on and so forth so that you can best advantage yourself and when this opportunity zone thing popped up, I thought, all right, well, it might make some sense to move, move my business into an opportunity zone. And I started thinking about other ways to, uh, uh, you know, take advantage of the structure. So if you look at the, this is our, uh, your legal disclaimer, read it at your pleasure. I think you um, might go ahead and share your screen. Oh, it's not, oh shoot, it's not sharing. All right. I'll read it. 